This year we celebrate the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Now there's some important lessons that we can learn about leadership. So in the studio today I have a leadership expert, John Chapman. Now John, we're all familiar with the trappings of monarchy. What does this say about the symbolic role of leadership? It's true that we these days tend not to see too much of the the, you know, the, the sovereign trappings, which are the uh, the crown and the scepter. Uh, we tend to see the queen in you know the uh, the twin set and pearls, uh, but those in themselves are symbolic of what we might call uh, uh, a Middle England, which she has uh, consciously uh, set out to represent. But the symbolic trappings of things like the crown and the scepter and, and, and the long cloak are, are there to symbolise something which is that the role she has goes far beyond simply fulfilling a social role. Now, when she dedicated herself 60 years ago to serving uh, this country, uh, she took a solemn oath before a god that she is, uh, believes deeply in. And that was not a role that can ever be taken away. Uh, and so what you have is a sense of, a sense of service uh, to something far greater than herself. Uh, and, and it's not something that she can ever give up. Um, and when you look at the trappings, the traditional trappings of the crown and the scepter, what they represent are connections between herself as an intercessor between ordinary people and the everyday lives we all lead and this greater picture of what it is that she's in service of which is if you like almost a, a timeless concept of what it is to be uh, a nation. The Queen has reigned for many many years what does this tell us about the importance of continuity in leadership? I think it was Lenin who was no great fan of monarchies who said a quantity has a quality all of its own and there's no doubt that it's very, very unusual to see someone who's performed in the same role for, for 60 years. And when you think about the, the sheer depth and breadth of experience that that involves, I think you also appreciate the, the potential benefit that that has for those people who are working with her today. So you have someone who, who came into uh, the role in a, in a 60 years ago at a time of, of considerable crisis and, and has been through, has been, if you like, at the, the, the ear around uh, the, the table uh, with all of the leading politicians of the day uh, in every crisis ever since then. So you have someone who's been mentored by Winston Churchill and that's something that no leader can day today other than her can, can uh, talk about, uh, who's seen the country go through uh, the Cold War, the Suez Crisis, um, you have uh, all the problems in the 1960s with devaluation, the economic crisis of the 1970s, you have uh, the Falklands War, of which is the anniversary this year. All those crises are somewhere where she's actually listened to and given advice to Prime Ministers of the day. And so that accumulated wisdom is, is hugely valuable. Now this seems very far removed from the world of organisations. What parallels are there? What lessons can we draw for organisations? I think we see a lot of people moving into senior positions who are quite a young age these days. And I think there's a tendency to assume that, that they uh, almost require them to know everything when they move into that, that role. Uh, and of course, one of the, the challenges of transition into a new role is, is that you don't know everything and that it's a learning challenge. Um, so how does a chief executive manage to learn and look competent at the same time? It's a, it's a tough call and I think one of the things that helps is having people around them who can be a source of advice and wisdom. I think mentoring is a really important part of that. So I think that the, the Queen is a really good example of how that can really work to the benefit of, of people in, in senior positions. So in summary John, what lessons and, and pitfalls can we learn about leadership generally from the Queen's reign? Well, I think the first thing is, uh, is the value of mentoring uh, and finding a way in organisations to allow accumulated wisdom and experience that's there amongst uh, uh, more experienced people 
to still find its way through into the people who are actually managing the business. The pitfall is in letting those people go too early and losing that experience. Secondly, I think the Queen sets a, a really interesting example of the, uh, the, the power of emotional self-regulation. This is someone who spent many years performing a role which at times is very difficult and requires her to put other things first beyond herself. Uh, and I think you've seen that self-control and how useful it can be uh, to leaders when that's called for. The dangers, of course, is, is not changing at the right time, not actually becoming, uh, allowing emotional expression when it's needed. And that's something that she's been criticised for. And, and the third point is, is being aware of the power of the symbolic. Uh, it's hugely important for leaders. Uh, it links directly into those archetypal energies which are, uh, which are represented in the notion of the sovereign. Um, and they actually provide a real hot wire connection to people's sense of vision and purpose and future and, and why they're doing what they're doing. And I think that's something that uh, all leaders can learn from and learn how to use wisely and with good intent.